Okay, this is a video about uh, resolving circular references in a uh, corporate model. And you can find this file, and we'll, let's make a new file, and we'll call this uh, a circular reference we'll call the circular reference exercise number three and this is going to be the uh, corporate uh, circular uh, corporate model that's enough now if you want to find this file here's where you look you go to the website named edgebodmer.com and this file will be in the section that says build and it, it will be in the circular reference uh, section I haven't put it there yet because we haven't made it and this will be the one before the project finance model so we started with a really basic one on fees then we make one for a cash flow sweep now this will be a circular reference for a, a corporate model and let's uh, uh, go now the last there is a, a simple uh, exercise so if you want to see how to build this model you can uh, go to another video which uh, describes this okay unlike these other videos I haven't done this uh, before I haven't practiced I haven't, I'm not trying to make it smooth I'll probably swear this time it's getting late in the day and uh, uh, I'm just trying to get this done and over with now here's the problem with the circular reference before we made our interest expense on the opening balance and we also made our interest income on the opening balance and what that presumes is that all of this EBITDA, all of this cash flow and all of these capital expenditures occur at the end of the year because if we use the opening balance those balances exist for the end of the year now if we have some positive cash flow that means we're being pessimistic because the interest we could have used some of this cash flow to pay off the debt earlier than the end of the year and when we have negative cash flow we're being pessimistic it's not a very big issue but and other people say just to use the iteration button but let we're gonna do this in a uh, elegant way if we use the iteration button we can't use the goal seek and everything else so the first thing let's do is let's let's just show you how the circular reference exists if we would have made this the average of the opening and the closing balance and then multiply this by the interest rate we get a circular reference and if we do the uh, same of the opening balance and the closing balance then we get a circular reference again uh, and then we start to swear and we're pissed off and everything else now to fix the circular reference we're going to use this function technique and we're going to focus on this line if we could have somehow put 32.86 in this line everything would have uh, been resolved so let's go to the developer tab oh, I suppose we'll uh, record a macro switch it off uh, and I maybe you couldn't see that I'm just opening a macro and on this macro that was blank let's call it sub uh, circular how about sub circular uh, reference 
Now, in making this, this is just a subroutine. That's not what we want. We want a function, and we'll call that cash flow. That's what we're we're trying to solve. Okay, and if we put it like this, we get the end function. And the one thing that's really there are a few things different about a function, but one of them is we have to have something defined for the cash flow. Now to solve the circular reference, we're just going to start. And we're going to start. The first thing I think we need is the, we're going to uh, define this cash flow. This cash flow will be, how about we'll, we'll just start writing some of the, the formulas and that's what the, uh, that's the way to do it. So cash and I hope I can show you this. And can you, you can still see this, I think. Cash flow equals a C, I'm going to call it CF operations. Now, the thing I keep doing wrong is make spelling mistakes. Minus interest expense plus interest income um, minus dividends minus added cash. This is this added cash that we needed for the minimum uh, uh, cash balance that was a, a bit tricky. All right, and now well, let me push this back. Hopefully that works. And uh, whoops, what's going on here? Ça c'est le français. Qu'est-ce que c'est que ça? Oh no! No. Sorry about that little uh, inter uh, problem there. I should edit that out somehow. But now, uh, uh, what that means is we're going to need uh, um, we're going to need to define define all of these. Now, if we define the dividends, that we said was the earnings multiplied by the payout ratio. which means we're going to need an assumption for the payout. If you're watching this, you can watch me uh, make spelling mistakes, which is what I hate about this. And the other thing we sh need to do is remember, I think we made it so that we never pay uh, dividends if we have negative earnings. So we have to use this thing called worksheet function dot maximum and we take the maximum of that or zero so we essentially just follow what we're doing now the earnings are equal to the EBIT minus the interest expense plus the interest income so the next thing we need to do is just put in the EB. We need that as an input. So we've got the uh, dividends. Now let's get the interest expense. And that's the average of the opening balance. I'm going to just call it opening debt plus closing debt divided by 2 times the interest expense rate. OK, and that means we need two more things interest expense rate and we need the opening debt. I hope you 
get an idea of, of, of how this all works now. And we're not quite finished with that because the closing debt equals the opening debt. And then, you know, what we're going to have to do is review what we did in our corporate, mo in our model. We'll add, we'll put the added debt minus the reduced debt. And, oops, uh, and the reduced debt is equal to the uh, cash flow. That's the number we're looking at. And you remember what we did. We said what we put dot. This time it's the, first of all, we take maximum of the cash flow or zero. So if we have positive cash flow, then we're um, going to repay the debt. But we also have to pay the minimum of that or the opening balance. Dot minimum. I think this is going to be bad. I hope my dog doesn't bark here. Uh, the opening. What, what, what did I call it? Opening debt. Which means, uh, I'm going to move this over again which means we also need, oh, we already put the opening debt here, excuse me, okay? Now, the, the, uh, to get the, shh, to get the cash flow after debt, after reductions, remember that equals the cash flow, and then we put minus the reduced, uh, excuse me, uh, plus the reduced cash minus the uh, reduced debt. Okay, and then the, the added debt equals the cash after reductions and we take, remember, I think if that cash flow is negative, we need more debt. So we put worksheet function dot minim, maxim, uh, maximum of this cash. If it's, remember, if it's uh, negative, is that what I said? I think I said if it's negative, we need more. Uh, cash, so we put a negative in it. Um, I don't know if you can just put a negative sign. I'm not going to try it on our video. Okay, so we're, it looks bad, but all we have been doing is repeating the Excel uh, uh, calculations that we made in the Excel sheet. Now, um, we, we're going to do the same thing with the interest income. Okay, and equals the uh, uh, the interest in income equals the opening cash plus the closing cash divided by two times the interest income rate and we'll just over here put the interest income rate and then I'm gonna split this into two uh, sections I thought I did oops I forgot the comma okay and the interest income so we're, we're we're okay so far and the interest income is that, so what we need now is the closing cash. And the closing cash is the uh, opening cash plus the, uh, 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 plus the uh, added 
cash minus the reduced cash. Now the 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 oh I uh, uh, I'm gonna call this added cash the minimum cash. We we, we uh, have to be careful with this one, and this minimum cash is simply an input because that's not dependent that's important that's not dependent on anything so and we'll put plus the minimum uh, cash and then once we have the closing cash here then we need to do the same thing and just work through what the reduced cash cash is equal to you know what I'm going to do oops it doesn't like it when I do this sort of thing but the reduced cash is you know when we have a negative cash flow then we reduce the cash and we just change this to the opening cash I think it might be just off the sheet Okay, and then the, the same thing now with the, the added cash. Okay, and what did we what did I call that? I called it add cash um, equals the for this time if we have a positive cash flow whatsoever, and that's the cash after reductions and the cash after reductions here is is uh, the cash flow plus the reduced cash minus the reduced debt um, I suppose I can recompute that here I don't think you it's 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 not necessary that was kind of silly to do and then the good news is we're just about finished okay cash flow from operations we're going to need Cash flow from operations is EBITDA minus capital expenditures. Okay, so after the EBIT, we put cash. I'll call it CF. I'm going to call it cash from operations. Okay, and the reason I'm calling it cash from operations the reason I'm doing that is because the uh, uh, e when we're reading in a variable we like to see it really descriptive now once we do this of course some of the numbers go first and then some of them go uh, last and we'll go around and once we go around we'll have the interest expense we'll go around and we'll recompute the cash flow and we'll get a better uh, reflection of the interest expense. Um, once we have the interest expense, you know, I think uh, it would be better to put the interest expense towards the end here, and we'll get a better reflection of the uh, debt I'm probably no I'm gonna I'm gonna stop okay finally the final thing is that's what I was getting at we put for iteration equal one to let's just make it 20 we'll go around 20 times and we'll put next iteration now oh, that might seem like it's a very painful process to get the circular reference correct. If you have a big model and you're working on it a really long time, I don't think, I think the benefits are probably worth the uh, uh, costs.